Okay, great. Welcome to the 2nd of May Hyperledger Supply Chain and Trade Finance Special Interest Group with an august lineup of people attending live today here the day after International Labor Day and two days before Star Wars Day. So for that, we're glad you're here. Here we have Bobby Mosquero. She's going to be talking about the giving chain. So we'll get that in a second. Uh, first off, some housekeeping here. Uh, because we're part of Hyperledger here, all are welcome. Uh, so we're glad. Uh, please share any of your thoughts, ideas, uh, react to what Bobby is presenting here. Uh, it's a very interesting topic, and she has some uh, good things there uh, that, she, that they're working. Uh, the other part here, in addition to all is welcome, is because uh, this is an open forum here, and I trust, please don't share anything confidential that you don't wouldn't share with anybody else, uh, but please do share openly as you can with this. So let's see here. We will be recording this. It'll be up on YouTube. I was surprised. I look a week week ago, we had, a, or two weeks ago, we had a playing session for this, uh, this uh, group, and a week ago when I looked on YouTube, we had 72 people who looked at the planning session on YouTube. So that was good. <laughs> so I guess people are liking uh, these sessions out on YouTube here. And so we'll put this one up there uh, also uh, for the folks who are listening to it after the fact. Upcoming events, we have Alexander Style from Venturas talking in a couple of weeks here. And then you see some of the other events that are live uh, coming along uh, here. A couple announcements. Uh, Andrea is still doing great work with the uh, weekly news digest and other people who kind of open source it a little bit there. Was that a, was that a chair there, Bobby? I see. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, for getting our weekly news digest out. I kind of like how it has, you know, supply chain, trade finance, and then there's a lot of sustainability stuff in there. So there's always lots of links for you to uh, glance through for your, on your Sunday uh, there. In addition, uh, the last uh, last time when we had a planning session on our work for 2024 here, last year, again, we did the ebook. This year, we're doing some uh, specific blog posts. And so uh, we created a page, or I created a page uh, specifically. Let's see if I can show it. Are you seeing that there? So basically, this is just a working page here. See one comment here just to kind of get the ball rolling. You see that already there's some... Uh, sessions or some of some of the blogs we're thinking we'll do six of them here uh, somewhere and these are the potential topics that we're talking about who's leading it etc what's titled etc cetera, etc cetera. so you see there's a couple that um, we're thinking about here around trade finance and in November we got some open slots so this isn't all put in stone but it's a uh, it's the train is leaving the station, so if you have some beautiful ideas or want to join, uh, you're welcome to add to intellectual capital and hopefully value of this thing for others in this uh, space out there. So with that, let's get rolling here. Bobby Mascara uh, is going to be joining is joining us here from the Giving Chain, also a very active Hyperledger community member. For how long, Bobby? It's been a long time. Going on eight years. Eight wow. years. Okay. So if anybody can beat Bobby, I cannot beat Bobby. I if think Tracy can, can and <laughs> there's, a, there's a few people who definitely can. <laughs> so 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 it's it's good to have her and it's good that she's still in the blockchain space and coming up with so one of the things that we thought was very interesting is uh the NFT aspect of what she's doing here. And so that's one of the uh, things that will be good to hear. Uh the other thing, certainly blockchain wow. has a not a great, not the best reputation right now with people seem to go to prison all the time. So it's great to talk about generosity and using blockchain for those kind of things in a different way. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing here, Bobby, and then I'll allow you to share. Or you can start sharing, hopefully. Let's see if you can. It, it should be set up for you to share. There we go. All right. Bobby, it's, it's all yours. And Bobby, do you like questions along the way? Or um, actually, that would be great. My uh, partner Harley, um, who is from Elite Web, who supplies the circularity finance solution with me, um, is on the call and will be checking in on the chat. Um, and he'll have a chance to introduce himself and say hi um, in just a few minutes. So, thank you Beautiful. for the the lead in. Um, again, I am Bobby Mascara. I've been involved in the Hyperledger community 
um, active in the working groups and the special interest groups since they started. Um, the company I work for is uh, Ledger Academy. And through that company, I've got in a hyperledger education like no other, um, being a part of the community. It's as valuable as, a, in my opinion, a college education. Um, learning about the projects and the way that uh, an open source community welcomes community members. Um, so the trade finance for me, I got involved in the trade finance special interest group when I was working um, Ledger Academy uh, rights curriculum for the Linux Foundation on blockchain. We host the forums for the fabric courses. Um, we do a whole, you know, right curriculum for other um, endeavors as well. Um, but one of the things that we do is we host a meetup um, in Princeton. And through that meetup, we created the Giving Chain, which is a project that um, was a donation tracking project. And I'll explain a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, and that's where the supply chain and the trade finance came in. And that's how I met Andrea, was through the discussions on how that fits together, um, donation and supply chains. Um, so through that, I was been on the, the Hyperledger TOC, the Technical Steering Committee, uh, for three years. And when I served on that, I got a first chance to like experiment with all the new lab projects when they were just being developed. Um, so we were able to have the giving chain grow, um, but it only grew so far. Um, so basically uh, I had to reach out and if Harley, if you want to introduce yourself uh, quickly uh, to the people at Circularity Finance, and I'll let Harley explain their end a little bit, and then we'll really go into it. Okay, great. Thank you, Bobby, so much for that introduction. My name is Harley Hermanson. I am from Elite Web3 Solutions. Uh, we're the company that created the Circularity Finance ecosystem, uh, which is a regenerative finance uh, platform focused on microeconomies. And it also has a programmable donation invoicing application called CFI Give. And I'm actually the lead of uh, the nonprofit onboarding onto the blockchain and uh, through these programmable donations, uh, it just makes it more transparent and a more efficient way for charity and philanthropy on the blockchain. Great, thank you. So again, I think this is um, just a real quick slide. So through that meetup that uh, my company hosted, um, it's called Princeton Blockchain and AI. And we met all the time um, and the Princeton Hyperledger group met with us as well. And this was in 2019 um, and we created a social impact project. So Ledger Academy was kind of the, com the company that hosted it. Um, and then the giving chain um, is, is the supply chain end of the project where um, that like the charities come in and the actual programs to give relief to people in need. Um, and then the CFI give, that is a piece that sits behind the giving chain that helps organize those projects and how um, the flow goes through them. Um, and again, that's all done by the governing uh, business model of the circularity finance, which they um, give. So when you see how this works, all of these companies work together, you'll get an idea about how powerful uh, creating micro, micro economies, that's what the circularity finance piece does, um, and how charities can use those um, micro economies to, again, uh, fund nonprofits um, automatically and have programmable donations to make sure that the donations are actually going through smart contracts where they intend to go. Um, so together, that kind of uh, gives you the whole piece that we're going to go through today. Um, so again, the Giving Chain Project, we did it in um, the meetup group. We had a day at the end of the summer in 2019 where we gathered all the fresh produce from New Jersey um, and delivered it to food banks and uh, homeless vets that, you know, were off the grid. This gentleman, you know, gave them giving bags, which had um, stuff for them uh, to survive on. Our actual, we had our kids actually create those bags so they had to actually think about homelessness and what that means. Um, and then it got recognition um, from the uh, Government Blockchain Association. That was great. And it let the Linux Foundation accept it as a mentor project for the next year. Um, so the, what we did with this one was we used Sawtooth um, for the supply chain. So somebody on the day of the donation, uh, the day of the project opened their computer and, and, and spun up a, a, a sawtooth blockchain, 
um, and we had these giving bags and the giving bags had little barcodes on them that when um, they initiated the donation, the barcode was scanned into that you know blockchain. And then the uh, transporter took the next piece and, that, and then it was scanned in again. And then the final piece was when it arrived at the food bank. Very, very inefficient. Um, once the computer was turned off, the blockchain went away. Um, you had to print barcodes and get bags for all the, you know, looks like, like the IOT part of it was not there yet in 2019. Um, but it was a really unique idea where you could track the entire donation, sort of like a, a global 911, where anyone could, you know, go, go to this uh, interface and register an event and have people donate and transport and receive. Um, so then after COVID, uh, we revisited this with that mentorship program, and we were able to do it globally, have multiple sites doing it. We used um, a product now in Hyperledger called Firefly, which was blockchain as a service. Um, and it was now the age of NFTs. So instead of the barcodes in the bag, if you wanted to make a donation, you would put it right outside, take a picture of it. That picture was internally made into an NFT. Um, internally into your wallet that when um, the transporter took a picture that would transfer it automatically to his wallet. So the digital twin was the picture, the metadata would be added to it along the way. And when it got to the final place, the original donor had a uh, NFT receipt um, of the program itself. Um, so that was like the, the technology on that end worked. But again, it was a lot of um, creating projects to prove the technology. So we really needed to get like a foundation for this um, whole project going. Um, yeah, the missing piece. So, so we ran these projects. It was very, uh, from the technology point and the business point, we were merged together and it just was really inefficient and, and labor induced, you know, conducive to making the barcodes, doing the bags, all, you know, getting the NFTs going. Um, so there was a missing piece um, and it was, how to condition the funds to get where they need to be. Um, so that's where the uh, Elite Web and the Circularity um, Finance solution comes in. It lets you automate um, on the back end uh, the donations. So if your company is working, so for the example, just to keep in your head, that's how I explained it before, um, Ledger Academy. So when Ledger Academy is writing eBooks or, or publishing an e-course, um, built into a smart contract would be that when those monies came in, 2% of those profits automatically got filtered to um, the charity. We would be the giving chain for, for Ledger Academy. But in, in any other enterprise, it would be their their charity of choice, hopefully on our CFI Give uh, website, which I'll show you at the end. Um, so it's inherently integrated in every transaction, um, that 2%. So it's automatic funding for the nonprofit. So they don't have to be asking, running fundraisers, doing drives. It, it, it's an automatic, sustainable uh, cash flow uh, revenue stream, um, which is something like the, the nonprofits really need um, for it. So when you think about how that can automate the giving process, and that's just one end of blockchain technology, um, with the different ways blockchains interact, you have the supply chain on the end, and now you're going to have these smart contracts that that control the money. So these are complex layered solutions, all built on blockchains um, that give you that transparency, that immutability, um, the ability for everybody to see exactly what's going on. So how is it done? Hey Bobby? Uh, yes. Bobby, this is Tom. Can I ask a couple of questions here? Absolutely. Maybe so you mentioned condition the funds. So I'm, I haven't heard that term, condition the funds. So I'd like to if you could explain that and the 2% cash flow, I kind of lost that thread. I, I think what it is, is, Hey, when you go and you donate and you say, Hey, would you like to increase your donation to cover the credit card processing fee? It's, it's, it's kind of what I was thinking the 2% is, but also it could be the, Hey, I'm a nonprofit and 96% of all money we collect goes to actually providing what we're, you know, what we are as a nonprofit, right? And the other 4% goes for operational. So I think maybe, or maybe that 2% is that operational thing so that there is, like you mentioned, cash flow. So that there's there's cash flow for that nonprofit that is part of the whole donation string that automatically calls out. 
Great question. So in this day and age, a lot of companies and even in the news today, you have to be really careful who you donate to um, because your students might revolt or your, you know, you have to be very careful. It has to be transparent, has to be, you know, above board. So your company, and again, Ledger Academy is a very small company um, just starting up. That's why I'm only donating 2% of my profits to charity or my transactions to charity. But if I'm, um, say, a pharmaceutical company um, or a, a Red Cross, Green Cross, like a, a charitable organization and money comes in, I want to direct my profits automatically a certain percentage to a charity um, in hopefully the um, ecosystem we're talking about. And the programmable donation comes in. Um, if you look at the screen now, you give me a great lead in to answer that question about programmable donations. So basically it's saying, so, so on Ledger Academy, I'm the super admin in this case, and I have a primary wallet. And say uh, project two and three are eBooks or courses or something that's going to generate some income or I have outside donors. This is a two, two different models, but you can see how they both could work. So once that donor donates to Ledger Academy and, and or donates to a particular, and you'll see the CFI give uh, interface where you can pick which charity to donate to, um, donates to that, that money is already, once it's received, programmed with a smart contract. So in that first white box, you'll see if any money goes to, and I'm going to call sub wallet number one, the giving chain. So somebody donates to the giving chain. Automatically, that money is going to go into different wallets that do different things. The first wallet is going to be administrative fees. So that's going to be the people who are running the program. Uh, the next is marketing. If you have these great charitable um, donations and, and, and events going on, you need to let people know about them. Next are the programs themselves. Say you're building houses for homeless or you're... you're you know, supplying food banks in the winter or whatever the project is that the rest of the money, which would be a chunk of it, hopefully most of it, all of it, um, except for a few, few percentages, uh, would go to actually donating um, that. Um, and then the, another percentage of that could go directly into the funds, the donations um, for another donation if, if this is, is profitable. So the way that the program works is the money would get filtered into the primary wallet and if it is designated for the giving chain, once that smart contract is um, executed, the donation would be programmed for that per whatever percentage you decide. I mean, when you're setting this up and we'll show you the circularity finance piece that helps you set this up. But once you set that up, the money's filtered in. So for like a giving chain example, uh, 1C wallet would be for the program. So that would be the money say to go buy, um, diapers for the women's homeless shelter um, and all that money would go the project manager would be the one who controls that wallet who would actually go physically buy the the donation and it would be tracked again through that giving chain supply chain where you got to see that nft um, and there's that's again the supply chain on that end works with nfts um, there's another way that nfts come into play in this because again it's a very complex multi-layered solution and I'll discuss that later. But first, I want to make sure, Tom, I answered your question. Questions? Uh, I, I think you said it right at the beginning. I, I guess I'm trying to figure out who would want to use the giving chain. So one example I think you hit upon. So in my case, I have a startup, and we have a little bit of a social impact focus around talent management for blue-collar workers, right? Uh, I think it's an underserved market out there. And so at some point in time, we're going to want to take some amount of our profits if we ever get anywhere start up, right? And we, we, will, we will want to drive some amount of our profits out there into, you know, not other non nonprofits, right? Because we're a for-profit company. So it sounds like I could use a giving chain in order to drive 2% of our profits or revenue or whatever we decide to do through the giving chain. And I have transparency, et cetera, et cetera. And Close, could... but but I want you to transfer the giving chain word for uh, CFI give. Okay, CFI give. Okay, CFI give is going to give you the ability to choose the charity, and Circularity Finance is going to give you the ability to set up the conditions for those charities. And I'm going to show you screenshots of it all in a second. Bobby, I really appreciate 
uh, you're talking about how it sets up the conditions. Uh, one hat I used to wear was in government financing and a lot of the money that came through, it was you can spend no more than 20 or 30% on overhead and this much has to be on direct programming. And we had to do a lot of paperwork to demonstrate meeting those conditions. I know it's not just government, it's also a lot of foundational giving has those conditions. So seeing this built into the system is really powerful. Yeah, it is amazing. It's it cuts out so many layers, so many layers. It's just automatic. And again, it it is again conditional. You can build smart contracts. Like for instance, if you have, um, I'm just going to use a hundred dollars to build a school. Um, you get the first twenty um, percent of that hundred dollars when the foundation is finished. You get the first twenty percent to build the foundation. You get the next 20% if you complete that. You don't get the next 20% for the walls if you haven't built the foundation yet. So you can condition the donations right. even further down the chain. That's great. Now, if that initial 20% is being used, the other 80%, is that being held in an escrow account? Um, making it's in the making wallet interest? that it's supposed it's in the wallet okay. it's supposed to be, but you know that wallet is conditioned on whatever again on, on... governance model you decide. Right. So okay. You can set the conditions. Great. Thank you. That's and, this sounds amazing. I'm going to come back a little bit, Bobby. Here, so the folks that would want to use sci-fi, sci-fi give, <laughs> is it sci-fi give or sci-fi give? Sci-fi give. Sci-fi give. Okay, um, would be people who, like I talked about, they have they have a business and for-profit business, and they're going to whether they're big or small, they're going to direct some amount of their either percentage or revenue or they have a bucket of money. If you're a large corporation, right? You're gonna say, okay, we give $100 million in the US for blah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. And then we could use CFI Give in order to direct that $100 million. Or it could be for individuals. I wanna see where I gave $100, $100 to something else, some food bank, for instance, right? Mm -hmm. I think to use your food example. And now I see that that bought this amount of groceries that went into some food pantry and somebody picked those up and, and you know, that's beautiful, right? So the, the those are those are kind of the sense of who I'm getting would be would like this thing. And as uh, that that example is absolutely correct, but there's also another sector that would use the CFI give, and that would be the giving chain as a as a nonprofit itself, because now I want to be registered there so that when your company comes to look at CFI give, it sees the giving chain, and CFI give has a built in know your nonprofit. So it, it collected my tax ID number. It proved that I'm a nonprofit. I passed it. So it's, a, it, you know, it validates that charity. And again, then you can, you know, decide and we'll show you that interface in just a second. Okay. Good. I, I will be quiet. Thank you for clarifying <laughs> that for myself here. <laughs> okay. So again, so when you have these programmable donations, um, you are, Everything is traceable. So it's all transparent on the blockchain so you can track it. Uh, you can secure the payments without, again, it is all through this micro economy that you've built up for this um, business enterprise endeavors. Um, and the donations are recurring automatically. So every time profit comes into the uh, super admin's wallet, it's programmed to go to the charity that it's supposed to. So again, big companies like uh, Walmart, 2% is a lot of money. So every transaction, if they put 2% into this charity that they've chosen, and it happens automatically through a smart contract, nobody has to oversee that. There's no paperwork. Um, and again, it is donor protection. Your identity is protected. Your, your KYC, you're not dealing with people that you don't know or that haven't been looked at. So you can guarantee that the donation is going to the Red Cross if CFI gives Red Cross is running a event and they are in the CFI give uh, website. So again, this is uh, for the uh, non-government organizations to um, help them manage the whole donation process um, and and achieve their goals easier without that back end paperwork and third parties. And it's very efficient when it comes to the to the workflow process. Um, and this is the um, interface for uh, CFI Give. And as you see, it is, uh, you can register a fundraiser. There's again, different um, ways that you can prove uh, whether you're a uh, customer, which is just a donor, not just a donor, the backbone of the 
whole process, a donor or a registered company that's directing some of their profits, or again, like me, a, a, a nonprofit that's just trying to um, get a cash flow in for the programs that it wants to run. So automatic value distribution is uh, receiving them automatically and dis dispersed to the designed wallets through smart contracts and multi-signature um, determined by the NGO. Um, parent and child accounts kind of manage the, again, that programmable donation. And once the money is received, uh, it follows those preset conditions. Um, and it supports donations can be made um, to the addresses in XDC, um, which is a traded uh, currency now. Um, layer one tokens are soon going to be added, Polygon. So it's it's going to be interoperable with um, other blockchains um, at the, than it is at the moment. Um, and let's move on quick. So again, for um, you want to register your nonprofit, you have to give your, uh, that's, Owner social security number, actually, that's a, a little, it should say uh, your uh, EIN, your employer identification number from the government, because this isn't a customer. But if I'm a customer, just a random person who wants to donate, and I've heard of this website, I can go and I can donate um, through this uh, interface. Bobby, are you only working with US orgs right now? I see owner social security number. Um, no, that's why we we're changing it. Um, we we're going to do corporate identification numbers right now. Um, I think the people are targeting the um, U.S. Harley can probably answer that if there's any international customers. I know the Green Cross is international. Um, yeah, so we're actually going to go ahead and, of course, there's jurisdictional stuff that comes into play. Currently, mm -hmm. it's a, released as an MVP. Um, but as the MVP expands, that's when we're going to be adding in um, where we can check the VPNs and be able to... Uh, Put in specific smart contracts, uh, depending on jurisdictional laws, like for KYC, for like political figures uh, mm -hmm. or for political um, people, and mm -hmm. also different jurisdictions that may have specific needs for KYCing these um, donors. Very good. Thank you. That's helpful. You're welcome. Good to know. Um, again, so how the NFTs work in this section, so I said it's it's, it's a complex multi-layered solution. So you have NFTs at that end that we talked about with the giving chain. But here in, in, in the CFI give, NFTs are also used as proof of your donation. So if you want to give, and I'm going to show you how all this looks, if you want to give to the giving chain, you would mint, um, say, for instance, there is a... Uh, giving chain project for um, donations to the food bank, and you want to give to that specific project, you can mint the NFT and the value that you put into the NFT is then transferred to the smart contract and you receive the NFT as proof of your donation. Um, if I had any uh, minted, they would show up here. So you could then prove to show all of the donations that you have uh, been a part of. And again, here is just, so if you go to the sample of uh, donate, uh, you can select a cause, it drops down. Here are some, this is, I'm working completely in testnet. Um, in, in a week and a half, we're going to go live with Ledger Academy in the giving chain. Um, and we're going to do a big meetup for it. So we'll let you know. So uh, you'll see some things here that are just um, from testnet. So it's not live on the XDC network. It's on the XDC testnet. Um, so Demo 101 isn't really a charity. <laughs> um, so here's a bunch of charities that, um, you know, you would be able to donate to. Um, so that is streamlining uh, transparency. It enables the NGOs to specify the amount of distributed funds. Um, and it's clearly visible where the donations are going. Um, yes. A question. The NFT represents what exactly? Is it the donation itself? So similar to, you know, I get a letter from a nonprofit that says you donated $200 or whatever to blah, blah, blah. Um, is it that kind of idea? Or yes. is it the idea of it's the NFT of proof, proof of receipt at the nonprofit and proof of use of that? If donation? I can go ahead and step in. Um, yeah, exactly. So essentially it's an accounting tool. It serves as a receipt, the NFT. <clears throat> And there's, it's actually multi-layered. It's a dynamic NFT. So that way 
um, the metadata can be updated. So as the nonprofits are making this impact, they can go ahead and upload pictures or videos onto the NFT to keep you updated so that you can actually see uh, your donations being put to use. Okay, so it's impact plus proof of donation for right Exactly, now. but it can also open up doors to smart contract gated experiences for these nonprofit or for the donors, um, such as um, staking or different um, experiences that they it can open up for them or different uh, seminars. Um, and it can also be used for recogn re uh, recognition so that they can show that they actually made that impact. So experiences that like, hey, you're a top donor, so you get to come to some banquet, you know, that kind of idea? Yes, there is eventually uh, going to be a ranking system um, to gamify it, uh, to incentivize nonprofit to incentivize donors to go ahead and donate more, as well as nonprofits to continue to make an impact. Okay, gotcha. I'm like sure for be the example with Ledger books. Academy, um, if we have eBooks, you would, if you wanted to learn about AI, um, you would purchase the AI NFT from Ledger Academy, and that would be proof that you, you know, donated, and the money for that would go to the charity. Um, you donated to uh, Ledger Academy's fund for the charity of, of the choice, but you would get that NFT and that would represent either the, the um, dictionary or the um, curriculum that backed up whatever, you know, we're teaching at the time. Okay. So in different businesses, it can work different ways. Good. Thank you. So again, now that we have the ability to program the donations, how do we set that that backend piece up where it connects everything together? So we have to create a micro economy where this all works. And again, I always go back to the education. So like for someone like me, people take classes, they're gonna earn tokens. They're gonna earn like almost like Starbuck rewards um, in this micro economy. And it keeps, uh, those are the incentives uh, to keep it running. Um, that's the basis of tokenomics, like that gamified, you know, you need more tokens, you get more, you give more, um, it, and it's part participation. And the more that people participate, the more stable the environment becomes, um, cause these micro economies are self-sustaining economies, um, and they leverage that transparency, security, efficiency that the blockchain, um, offers them. And then because it's blockchain, you can multi-layer applications on top of that. So you can do a complex solution uh, that covers um, very different parts of your enterprise. Um, so again, the vision of the circularity finance is to harness uh, the technology um, to drive the positive change. So make it seamless to donate money to see where your causes are. You need something, Harley? Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, <laughs> didn't I just saw your hand. Like, okay. I think that was from earlier. Let me go ahead and lower it. Okay. Um, again, I know this will empower Bobby, that gives, me, Bobby that gives me a chance. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm asking all the questions here, but that's okay. Um, is this microeconomy and the NFTs, it almost sounds like, hey, I'm going to be seeing outcomes. And if I like these outcomes, I'm going to my NFT is going to be more valuable is kind of where I'm thinking this is leading. Is that kind of where you're going or not really? Um, the NFT is not explain proof of donation. Well. So um, how valuable is your proof of, you know, how, you know, your donation is again. Yeah. If you are donating to larger projects, again, that proof would be a larger percentage of what you need to prove you donated for that year. If you're doing it for accounting reasons. The okay. NFT will have a value. Let me, let me hold that question. Like, why don't you continue? Let me hold okay. that question. Okay. Okay. So again, we're trying to empower the nonprofits. Um, the tokenomic principles, uh, transparency of ownership. Uh, you need the uh, deflationary mechanisms. All of these things are built into the solution. Um, the value stability to like algorithms to collateralize, collateral, I can't say that word for anything, collateralize your reserves and maintain the token's value and stability. Um, all of these things are built in um, with the adoption of a real world utility token. And again, I'm going to show you how that works in a second. Um, so now, 
with circularity financing offering the decentralized marketplace so now you're going to have a place where you can go and you saw almost it was a marketplace for charities you could select your charity <laughs> and and that's available for you um lending and borrowing platforms you can see that um within the uh, circularity finance dashboard which we haven't gotten to yet you can swap um tokens for different to you know it, it helps you uh borrow and lend money and we'll see how that goes all through these donation portals which make it simple uh what you see is what you get technology so it's not um too hard for anyone to reach their needs um again decentralized finance i'm sure with trade finance group here um, they understand all of these advanced financial tools. Um, these are now all available um, with your value in your NFTs to answer your question, Tom, how valuable are they? They're as valuable as you make them. You can stake them um, depending on your governance model of your circularity finance DAO, which is a decentralized autonomous organization, which I'm going to show you how this is all governed by that. Um, you can invest in these different tools to enhance your wealth and the um, value of your endeavors. So our journey ahead, um, I'm going to leave this slide to Harley because uh, he's kind of more um, in tune with the dates on this, if he doesn't mind. Yeah, of course. Uh, thank you, Bobby. Um, so essentially the journey ahead, it kind of goes over um, the process of building this platform and um, right now it's actually a pretty good time because we actually went on mainnet today. We're still working out a few uh, bugs, but like Bobby mentioned, we're going to be bringing her um, nonprofit on as the first nonprofit on C5 Gives. And then from there, we're going to be opening it up to the Green Cross UK, as well as their additional chapters. And then we have a list of about 15 other nonprofits uh, that plan to be on this platform. And I think as soon as we get a couple on, it's going to ex exponentially expand uh, once they have the tools to go ahead and scale their nonprofit. That way they can uh, reach a larger audience, have a more sustainable cash flow, and have better accounting tools that will help scale their nonprofit so they can make a larger impact. Thank you. Of course. Uh, okay. Bobby and Harley, there's okay. a question in the chat around bridging fiat and the tokens, if you want to handle that now, or if you want to hold off on answering that question. Uh, to Harley, do you want to answer the question in the chat? Yeah, of course. So how does the, how do you bridge the gap between fiat and the tokens? Uh, that's a great question. Um, well, there is um, on-ramp um, built into circularity finances uh, platform. So that way, anybody who uh, wants to use traditional methods, such as a credit card, um, they can go ahead and uh, purchase their uh, XDC or whatever token as we're going to be expanding since we're blockchain agnostic. They can purchase whatever token CFI uh, using that uh, uh, on ramp. Any follow up, Eric, or is that good? Okay, so now we were talking about the circularity finance uh, solution, but we didn't really get into look under the hood on how that works. So to build a DAO, a decentralized autonomous organization, you kind of first have to envision the whole entity and how it's going to work from start to finish um, and your key goals and resources that you're going to have. Um, and then if we're using, you know, you decide your protocol, we're going to use the C5 solution um, and smart contracts with wallet management. Yes, Toby? Okay. All right. Michael, can you hear me very well? Hello, can you Hello? go ahead, Toby? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Um, I was going to ask you mentioned something about SDC network. So I looked that up. That was a token. Is that a, is that a token she was talking about? Um, I believe the question was what tokens are we talking about? Well, right now the one yes, we yes. is XDC. Yeah, so okay. we're talking okay. we're talking about XDC, which is the network that primarily deals with trade fin finance. It's a hybrid blockchain, so it integrates both public and private blockchains. So, so I just looked up now. It is only Binance Smart Chain. Is that is that correct? 
it would not be on Binance Smart Chain yet. We may um, go, we may bridge it over to Binance Smart Chain in the future, but currently it's on the XDC network and we're going to be moving, uh, we're going to be launching on Polygon within the next few weeks. And then after that, Algorand and Hedera. And maybe Binance may be in the I'm future. Not, sorry, I want to clear something. You said Hedge Network, is that a blockchain on its own or as a token? Could you repeat that question? Like you said, you said SDC. Is that a token soft or blockchain? That would be the Zenfin network, the XDC network. I mean, like type that like directly because I saw an SDC token on Binance Smart Chain. Can you drop a link to the blockchain of you know what you were talking about? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's on its own network. I can. It's on multiple yeah. tier one exchanges as well. It may be on Binance. I'm not sure. You, I'll go. We can go ahead and drop the contract address to make sure that you have the correct okay. address. That's good. Thank you. Of course. Okay. So, so <clears throat> to develop a multi-level um, solution, you have to consider a lot of things. Um, so for us, again, we're going to use the Ledger Academy example um, with the Giving Chain as the charity that, or the nonprofit that the Ledger Academy wants to filter its profits to. Um, so in order to do that, we have to create, um, first part is, is knowing, you saw a little bit on the um, other slides about uh, KYC, know your customer, KYN, know your nonprofit, and KYB, know your business. So Ledger Academy would be a business and uh, the giving chain would be a nonprofit and you'd register each one of those separately. Um, now for the um, actual Ledger Academy, in order to be able to make decisions about um, how much of the percentages are gonna go to the charities as opposed to administrative fees, curriculum development, um, how I would you know portion out the education um, budget for, for my company, um, I have to make those decisions. So that's like a governance decision. So in order to do that, um, right now it's set up just me. Um, in the future, um, hopefully people will buy the membership NFT to Ledger Academy to be able to make those choices with me. So that's kind of like your proof of, um, authority where you you've purchased now you have a right to to make some authority authoritative decisions in the setup of that DAO um, but then you need the token that incentivizes the community that you're trading so when I take a class um, I want to create the utility for just my company it's my personal um, token I can call it whatever I want and it's just the way again I'm going to use the Starbucks points because everybody buys coffee and has Starbucks points it's just the way that you gain value so you get certain um, benefits from that um, so we're going to move on to all right this is the CFI dashboard so when I log in a little later or show you the CFI dashboard this is the first place you're going to see and again it is we, we showed it a little bit before about the wallet, man, wallet management as the super administrator, I'm gonna to connect to the wallet that's going to be recognized as the super admin. I created it that way. Um, through the dashboard on the left um, are the steps where you can create your own DAO. We encourage you after this, if you're interested, reach out to Harley, we'll get you the faucet for the test net and you could be up and going and, and, and creating your own DAO on the test net. Um, so you have to connect your wallet first um, and it is XDC. So you need to change the, well, it's not. XDC, so you have to, again, a cryptocurrency has to be on the blockchain it was created from. So you can't trade XDC on anything but the XDC blockchain. You can't trade Bitcoin on anything but the Bitcoin blockchain. Same thing with Ethereum. They all are products of their blockchain. Um, so we need to connect to XDC. So it'll ask you first to connect your wallet. Um, I'm using a MetaMask wallet, and then it's going to make sure that I'm on the test net for XDC. Um, next week I'll be on live net, but right now we're on test net. Um, and then that will show up in my account. And the gateway that I'm using to connect these two is the circularity finance. So their logo shows up there. And as you can see, I'm the test XDC net. So that's all the information that, again, if this is not familiar for you, reach out to me and I can go over this a little slower on how to connect wallets in the uh, web three environment. 
Um, so just reach out. But right now we're going to be using the account that ends in 61 as the um, administrator um, from account eight in the account. And once you're connected, you can see all the information that was there in MetaMask is now showed up because I'm connected to the C5. My 61 account is connected and I have my XDC and I had previously swapped some XDC um, for C5. And again, this is all test net stuff. Um, so I, I previously had done that. So now I have that um, two-tiered system of, of tokenomics. So verification, uh, a business, this is how, I've done this already so many times and you'll see when we go live, <laughs> the result, um, but you would get your business approved. You would give your, you know, um, employee identification number or whatever your jurisdiction requires for registering your business. Um, and then we had talked about those two different types of um, tokens. And here's, as the administrator of the DAO, you would set that up. You would create your supply. You would create um, play, uh, uh, IPFS, a, a place to permanently store your NFTs so that the community can mint them, buy them, and create them. Um, and you would link to that site. You would create, this would be creating the smart contract for that either um, on the left token generation for membership into your DAO or um, the utility token that incentivizes your community to work with you. Um, so again, it's pretty pretty simple um, how to set this up. It's just like uh, any uh, form you'd fill out. Um, so it's easy to get up and running to generate the micro economy for your DAO. And then again, when that's finished, you have your profile. Um, this is my membership DAO. Um, it's I just made a random number. It will cost you 200 XDC to become my partner in, in the Ledger Academy DAO, where you'll have... Um, rights to help me create proposals uh, for either, you know, whatever Ledger Academy does, whether it's courses, curriculum, meetups, uh, seminars, webinars, um, you would now have voting rights um, and rights on these proposals. Um, and then again, this is the token, oh, I want us to go back and mention one thing. So in my micro economy, in order to become a member, you have to purchase a ledger. So the membership NFT is going to be the ledger. Um, and then if you notice the mem the utility NFT is called knowledge. So while you're exchanging courses, you're exchanging knowledge. I thought that was very cute. So again, you can name this whatever relevance it is to your community. Um, so again, now that we've, you can walk through the steps here, you can set up your shareholder. So initially when you start these DAOs, you have to disperse the money. There's uh, tools for you to um, do an airdrop, stake, um, and again, start using those decentralized finance tools that are so important in Web3. Um, and then this is where you would configure that um, admin NFT and then your token, the knowledge token uh, for your community to use. Again, step-by-step, step, walk you through it. And um, as you'll see, the ledger is, is a DAO set up. It's active and taking proposals now. Um, this is just from the view all DAOs on that Circularity Finance um, site that you know, you've logged into and connected your wallet to. Um, so it knows that you're the admin and that you have. And then this is just, I'm jumping to the Giving Chain's proposals. So for the Giving Chain is set up as a nonprofit that's a separate entity than than. Ledger Academy, even though Ledger Academy is going to filter 2% of all its income to um, that charity, I could change the charity or change the terms with the Ledger Academy DAO voting, shareholders, decision making. Um, but right now we're going 100% in for the giving chain. Uh, so for the giving chain, creating a proposal for the giving chain. So um, I made uh, questions. Okay, so I made um, proposals to um, stock the food banks in the summer and in the winter. And those two charity projects are different because in the summer you're collecting farm fresh produce from the farms in New Jersey. And in the winter you're not, you're collecting just you know canned goods and, and stuff that's already uh, prepackaged and made. So there are different fundraisers. So if you wanted to be a part of that giving chain um, event, you could go right to that C5 website and be um, part of, you would see Giving Chain Food Bank Winter, and you could vote um, if you have a Giving Chain membership 
or you can just donate by minting one of the NFTs. And then you would have the minted NFT that would be uh, symbolic of the fact that you donate to the food bank in winter. Um, so that basically is how you can prove your donation through the NFT, vote on projects and uh, donate to them. So that's about it for me. I'm going to stop sharing now and see if Harley has any questions to answer from the chat. And then we'll go to live questions. <clears throat> so this is uh, Jeff, I don't have any question for Harley. Think you can, can hear me okay? Yes, of course. Um, I always wondered how these work with donation NFTs. So maybe, you could probably answer this question. I've always wondered how this works. So you, um, you know, you tie up your wallet, you, you create slash mint a token, or sorry, an NFT. Um, whatever ERC standard you're using, are you shutting off the transfer function? In other words, I can't transfer that NFT over to somebody else. In other words, um, if I give 10, nope. that NFT represents $10,000 that I, that I donated. And so Tom over there needs that for taxes and I don't, and I can, so transfer, right now I can transfer that over to him somehow, or is the metadata preventing that? Yeah, so right now it's currently the XRC20 standard, which is a common standard where it does allow, it's not currently a soul bound token, where it's stuck to the to the wallet address where it was originally mm -hmm. pinned to. Uh, but in the future, we do plan to add features in the admin panel where um, if it's necessary, if the nonprofit doesn't want the transferring of that NFT, they can go ahead and uh, set that up in the smart contract wizard. So then, so under, under the giving chain and then circularity, I can actually transfer a donation documentation over to somebody else for tax purposes. Is that possible? Yep, that would be correct. Um, really? If he's, yeah. yeah go on, so if go I don't on. need a tax deduction, let's say I have no income and I donate money from a, an account I have, and Tom over there says, Joy, I really need that $10,000 donation. <laughs> I think yeah, I sell to Tom for $2,000 like and I can- you the IRS here, Jeff. <laughs> Oh, of course. <laughs> it's not the IRS, it's your congressman. No, okay, but you can transfer that over. Okay. I was wondering, is that always the case, just background that you know that you, on, a, on a donation on a blockchain to a nonprofit that you can transfer the NFT over to somebody else? Is that usually a process that's available? Well, it would be in your wallet, so you would have the option, at least currently, to go ahead and send it to anybody else. Um, okay. But in the, it's an open ledger, so you can see where the original transaction was minted from. You can see the wallet. And Hi, everybody. Okay. I am so sorry to jump in. I'm part of the development team, and I just wanted to clarify that answer for you. Is that okay if I just speak for two seconds, Harley? Yes, of course. Go for it, Johnny. Introduce yourself. I am so sorry. Hi, everybody, and, and I'm so sorry. Um, I am a little bit out of the way, but I heard the question, Jeff, and I think where Harley might have maybe either misunderstood is if you're making the donation, it is an XRC20 token. What okay. you are receiving is actually going to be an 1155 non-transferable asset. Oh, uh, so you're using ERC 1155. So when you're saying mint, you're minting the actual token. Yeah, so essentially if you Not make a donation, NFT. if you make a donation, okay. the nonprofit is able to establish the limit of donations they can receive or the type of, you know, it could be unlimited or they can put a limit on the type of donation that they can receive. If they only want to receive a thousand donations for the year, you could do that. If you want to receive as many as you want, you could do that. That's the whole purpose of this 1155 collection. Mm -hmm. It is non-transferable okay. once it has been given to you as a receipt for the donation. And the NFT metadata holds the location of where the value was distributed from, let's say, Bobby's side of things. So as an NGO, the giving chain is going to determine what happens to the value that you receive. And so let's say that you donate $100 to the giving chain. Because it's a programmable donation, as Bobby was explaining, it allows her to say 20% went this way, 10% went this way. And you're able to receive that information in a transparent fashion so that that way you can have proof of what they're using that money for in a sense of distribution. But when it comes to the standard XRC20, 
it means you can either donate to the nonprofit an XRC20 token, whether that's an XDC token minted on the XDC network originally or USDT, USDC on that okay. network. And so that way you can kind of make that transfer of value to a nonprofit as you please and also benefit from the transparency that the platform will be able to give you as a donor. I hope that okay. that better answers your question. Yeah, yeah. Good. Good. Thank you for Thank that clarification. You. My apologies. Okay, so you can't transfer at the time then. Okay. So, so uh, we're, we're coming up towards the top of the hour here. I think we have time for one more question. However, if you have questions, put them in chat and then we'll save the chat and then we'll get them to Bobby and Harley and Johnny here. And then we can figure out a way to probably post it publicly on the uh, page for this. Does that work, Alicia? I think we could probably do that, right? Yeah. The answer is that. And the um, page that you had showed originally, Tom, uh, for the blog and the planning, um, it also said work for the group. So I dropped a copy of the PowerPoint presentation on that page for people to view. Great. And Thank you so first. much. Wow. Thanks, Bobby. Okay. We don't have to do that. Yeah. Okay. So um, any, any last live questions that somebody wants to ask? Again, if, if, uh, you do have a question, pop it in the chat here before we uh, summarize and uh, close close out. Thank you very much. Going once, going twice, going three times for questions. So Bobby, Harley, Johnny, thank you very much for uh, joining us here uh, to talk about the giving chain and CFI uh, give and circularity finance. Did I get all that right? You did. <laughs> okay, there, there we go. So interesting concept. I can see a lot of um, value associated with this, especially in the sustainability space and social impact, environmental impact, et cetera, et cetera, triple bottom line types of things. So uh, thank you for sharing. This will be up on uh, YouTube probably this afternoon. Tomash is very good at that. So um, please share it with other people. We'll also put the link out there. Um, Please do share the link when available, uh, Tom. Absolutely, Andre. And I know you'll get it out to our 4,000 plus people on our LinkedIn group. So, oh, not that that a few. I mean, I uh, planning to hit at least 10,000, 20,000. It's just a number. <laughs> we are, we're going to take over the world. Okay, that sounds good. So, yeah, you know, that's our you. master plan. <laughs> that's a master plan. Thank, thanks, everybody, for joining. Enjoy the rest of your day, whether you're listening live or whether you're listening to it on the recording. And thanks again for Bobby, Harley, and Johnny. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Take care, everybody. Yeah. Have a good one, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank, Bye. so Thank you again, Bobby and Harley and Johnny. And John. Um, Bye, Alicia. Bye, Hamby. Bye-bye. See you. Have a good one, everybody. Is there any questions in the chat that we need to grab, Alicia, that we didn't answer? It, things were going fast. Here, I just saved a copy of the chat so that we can go yeah. over it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye, everybody. Ciao. Yeah. Bye. Ciao. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye.